If you enjoy eating foods like fruits, vegetables, and nuts, you may want to listen up. A phenomenon known as colony collapse disorder is quickly spreading through the world's bee population. And as our Lisa Hines explains, it could change the way we eat. Nearly one-third of all food produced in North America must be pollinated, and nothing does this better than bees. Perfectly engineered to carry pollen from one plant to another, bees are responsible for pollinating $15 billion worth of crops annually. But a mysterious disease in bees could threaten the food we eat. The honeybee is an important component in our food system and one, Oklahoma beekeeper Gary Gross says, we usually take for granted. The pollination is what balances it all out. And you can have the best air, the best tractor, the best soil, the best fertilizer, but if you don't have the pollination, you don't have anything. According to the Agriculture Department, the honeybee population is absolutely critical to U.S. agricultural production. 90% of our apples and blueberries are pollinated by honeybees. Nearly half our peach crop depends on them and more than 25% of our orange production. Without their contribution, we would not enjoy the abundant food supply that provides both nutrition and income for our nation. From the moment they're born, bees work like little soldiers, but the world's pollinating bee army is dwindling by the millions. A mysterious anomaly is occurring within the ranks of hives, known only as colony collapse disorder. Bees are disappearing on a grand scale, and that could have devastating consequences to our nation's food supply. USDA scientist Jay Evans. There would certainly be short-term food shortages if bees were to disappear or to become unable to fulfill their pollination. And in the long term, it would really represent the inability to grow crops that many of us love and use for develop uh, stronger nutrition, like nut crops and fruits. A very scary thought, and one that has USDA researchers quickly trying to solve what is causing the problem of the disappearing bees. Colony collapse disorder was, was so named because in, we really don't know if it's a disease agent or a pathogen as we've been used to seeing or something from the environment or nutrition of bees or a combination of the above. The workers in the colonies tend to evacuate whether they're dying in the field or simply absconding or leaving the nest, we're not even sure. It's a mystery that's turning the researchers into detectives. Looking at suspects like genetics and chemicals, interviewing beekeepers for clues, and performing autopsies on honeybees. They have discovered a virus that could possibly be connected to the disorder. We see it as a priority find, to find out if this is the cause, but we're not ready to say that this virus is causing colony collapse. We don't think the virus is acting by itself. We think it's acting in conjunction with other parasites. As of now, though, it's the most closely linked factor in all of this. Researchers believe the virus got to the U.S. in bees imported from Australia to help with pollination. Evans says researchers will survey bee colonies to find out how widespread the virus is and which colonies are not susceptible to it. In the long term, we're looking at resistance traits. So we believe some honeybees are able to resist this virus. And if we can find a genetic way by which they do that, that's a breeding trait that could be put into the population in the future which could make beekeepers' biggest fear their best friend. Africanized bees first invaded Oklahoma in 2004, and it's these bees that may well hold the gene that can be bred into the European bee to make it less susceptible to disease. As long as we can keep a managed force of European genetics in the area to kind of compete with the African bees as well as possibly doing some cross mating with them even though they carry dominant DNA. I think that the biodiversity is going to show to be a major factor in some of the issues that we're looking at. A hope scientists like USDA researcher Judy Chen are working to make reality. All we can do is try to promote the immunity of a honeybee. So to make a honeybee more resistant to viral disease infection. We would be able to look at bees and perhaps find a reservoir of bees that could be bred and able to survive this virus in the future. A future that all are dependent upon. If you believe what 
has been reported to us for years that bees are directly responsible for every third bite of food that we place in our mouths. That's pretty substantial when you really stop to think about it. Now here's something you may not know. Bees are not native to North America. They were brought in by European settlers and along with them, the crops that need to be pollinated by bees.